certain things in life keep happening to you and no matter what amount of positive thinking, affirmations or self-work you do, the patterns will still persist. Now in difficult times, we often seek an explanation to the unknown in alternate sciences like numerology, astrology, etc. But are they really able to give us a foolproof answer? Joining us tonight on the show is a very, very special guest and a dear friend of mine who's been on a similar quest to understand why life happens the way it does to some people. And on this journey, she has found an extraordinarily simple and logical system that explains so. I am so happy to welcome tonight Sodamini Mishra. She is an Amazon best-selling author of five books, a globally celebrated illustrator and painter, and a wonderful human being. Just mention how you and I know each other and how we met because that is something even I kind of find it hard to digest when I look back <laughs> because it really was like it was out of the blue. It really was out of the blue. Yeah, you know. And uh, I got a call from you, and I still remember I was um, actually it was a random call because it didn't say like obviously I didn't have you like in my contacts, right? This was for my show on NDTV, and I kept thinking, "Kisko bolaye, kisko bolaye." And and then you just showed up on my Google search and, and I read about you in some articles and things just clicked, you know, right away. I wanted you on my episode and I think that's where we began. So, so yes, I think it will be a great start to talk about numerology and, you know, how we met and became friends and sort of influenced each other. Can you talk about the year it happened in? Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be like, you know, going to make sense. So um, that was the year 2016. And I clearly remember that because it was supposed to be my personal year four, which is supposed to be the archetype quarter. And uh, you also ironically had the same personal year. You and I have actually, yeah, ironically, and uh, have the same personal year running invariably. And uh, four is setting up the foundation. And it really was like, setting up the foundation for us as it were because um i think you at the time were like um i think it was a very laborious year for you if i remember clearly yeah. because we got down after that and uh, you told me how like you know yeah i'm like really slogging it off but i don't know if i really want to be in the city because you know it's kind of like uh, not a very healthy environment to be in and Though I'm enjoying my work, I love it, but but you know, there are these limitations. That's exactly mm -hmm. what number four stands for. Photo is a builder. But if you look back, you realize how that really was a very uh, imperative year in your journey. You would have realized that you sort of laid the foundation for what you were to do in the next five to six years. I clearly remember right after the shoot, I felt a certain knowing that there's so much more to this than I can see right now. And you know, that there's a bigger reason we have met. And it's quite amazing how we come together time and again to share our voice in the open, uh, you know, talking about the universe and metaphysical, pure knowledge that probably a lot of people wouldn't really openly believe or, you know, even feel comfortable talking about. I think that uh, in terms of um, all the metaphysical sciences, I think it's not important to kind of... Um, to know beforehand what's going to happen. I don't believe in that. I believe that like with archetypes, you have a certain personality type. You actually kind of dawn to cope with something in life at the time, which makes you, uh, makes you actually not go through it, but kind of make the best of it. You have a nine-year cycle, which recurs. I mean, it's a recurring nine-year long cycle. Our life is made of till the day we die. And uh, every year from years one to nine, you kind of have to dawn this archetype, this personality to make the best of that year. Now, every year will not be a good one. You know that even like if you take on an average, if you actually see people's uh, success graphs and all of that, you'd see that they have a good run for five to 10 years and then a come down begins. So mm -hmm. what does that mean? Does it mean that your life has been actually squeezed dry of all its joy thereafter do you think that you can't succeed thereafter but which is not true the fact is that those five to ten years may represent the pinnacle which every person has to go through the cycle we all have to have those crests and troughs and you know highs and lows but i think uh with this law what i actually aim to kind of put across which is why the self-help system is that every year you have to dawn an archetype till the day you die and those are the, the nine archetypes Types. How did I get into this? Boy, now that's a long one. <laughs> How do I begin? Because um, 
So the thing is, at the age of 14, okay, my mother, you knew my mother really well, by the way, a very important point of our friendship and why I kind of consider you, no matter how. I remember Rashmi auntie being a much more important link to our friendship than anything else. And and both of us, of course, I, I mean, not just to you as her daughter, but also to me as your friend. And I think I had more conversations with her um, than I did with you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that, yeah, we have known each other for eons now. And boy, I mean, what a journey it's been. Um, but you'll always be a very important part of my journey because, Richa, I still remember the heartfelt note you penned after she died. And you posted it on your Facebook. And um, I'm not on Facebook anymore, but that, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I did say that because it really did move me. And um, I think you and she had a very profound connection. And mm -hmm. sometimes, yeah, you did land of speaking more to her than even to me. And so I think, um, so yeah, you and I have this very uh, metaphysical bond. <laughs> I think I really miss her today, you know, because uh, had she been here today with us on the episode, this conversation would have been completely different. You know, it would have had a different charm, of course. But um, also the fact that there is so much a person can learn from her. She, we did have a conversation, if you remember, which is on yeah. YouTube. Is it there? Yeah. I mean, it's I don't still know there. It's still there. And, uh, okay, so like, um, yeah, that's going to be a very um, special video forever, at least to me. And, um, you know, like, um, I, when, when we met in 2016, I had no idea that we will forge a relationship that's going to go beyond this one interview. You know, it was so random. And um, which is why I'm saying number four year, we kind of laid the foundation of that. And um, yeah, so like, um, but that note, I had to, I had to, I had decided I'm going to mention that during this conversation because that did move me a lot. And I don't think I could have ever, I don't think ever, what I'm trying to say is that I didn't get an opportunity to kind of express how much that meant because my life has been go, 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 go since then. And I never even had the chance to sit and talk to you or even over the phone because you're not in Delhi anymore. And But I did want to tell you that uh, that note was a beautiful one. It was so articulate and you actually expressed everything. It was... It was heartfelt, I could tell, you know, it wasn't, there was nothing contrived about it. And um, it just defined every bit of the experience you may have had with her. So when I was 14, uh, my mother was clairvoyant, as you know. Yeah. Uh, so like in our family, obviously there were there was this um, ability, or maybe I wouldn't say ability. We always had uh, a history of delving into the unknown. My grandfather was a scientist. So I kind of come from this uh, place of having best of both the worlds where you kind of delve into the logical side of life and the metaphysical aspect of it also to see beyond the obvious. And um, so like, I think what happened was in my persona, the two sort of combined, you know, like uh, the quest to kind of investigate uh, into the unknown along with having the propensity to believe that there is an unknown, to believe that there is something which lies beyond the the ordinary. At the age of 14, I kind of got hold of this book, Linda Goodman's uh, book, and um, it was on zodiac signs. And I just found it extremely interesting. Like any 14-year-old, you have crushes, and you want to know, like, you know, what the, what's the zodiac sign of that guy? Or you want to know, like, oh, he has a crush on me. I think that's how it begins for all of us, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, really, it's funny, which is why I think I penned my thought book, which is about relationship, because I realized what makes I realized what makes people curious is relationships in the first place. Because everything else is in our control. Hmm. You know, work is in our control. Our ambitions are in, in our control. When I say in our control relatively. Yes. But when it comes to relationships, you just don't know how to figure another person out because he has his own her, his, I, I shouldn't say here that could be like a pat patriarchal way of talking. Yeah. But uh, they have, okay, so when it comes to another person, they have their own way of thinking, their own destiny, their own uh, kind of dynamics and complications. And you have no idea about how to deal with them. And it was very interesting that, you know, like, oh, Scorpio likes me. So would it be extremely possessive? And, you know, <laughs> Scorpio is known to be that. And I wouldn't like that. So I, I think I'm more like a liberal person, personality, you know, like, I would like a Libra because, you know, he's like, you know, charming and all of those things. And of course, when you grow up, you realize, discard that. Discard work. I don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> but like, 
<laughs> no, anyway, but like that's how it began. Zodiac signs can be a very generic thing to delve into. As in like, uh, like you can have 25 Leos in the same room and each one of them will be as distinct a personality as they can be. I mean, you know, you just wouldn't find two Leo personalities to be exactly the same, like replicas, you know. So because, so what is it? The combination permutation wasn't really falling into place, even in terms of psychology, human psychology, the mm-hmm. archetypes that you've come with, um, in terms of your persona, or let me put it this way, the kind of archetype we uh, study about in psychology or whatever, I think they they are like, they, they're a combination of factors. And I think all of them need to be explored, you know? So uh, thereafter, I started experimenting with different things. I mean, not just, you know, Zodiac 5 and a 14-year-old girl would be intrigued by. I was like, oh, let's talk about this. Let's just go to like things like uh, cartomancy or runes and all of that. And I was like, none of them are really giving me the answers I want because what I was plagued by was a big why. Why things happen the way they do. I didn't want to know like, you know, oh, what is going to happen? Or like, you know, or uh, or even questioning the past. I, I would see patterns recurring in everything. And I'd be like, why why is it that i mean there is there, there is something being communicated to me so that's why now numbers came in much later knowledge is supposed to be a very dry subject people are not generally inspired to like you know know more about it because it doesn't have pictures it's not colorful vibrant like cards and like uh, like other uh, methods of uh, mystical sciences it's numbers I mean, like, come on, who would be even inclined to know more about life through numbers? But I did have a very um, good book that I can't remember the name of, which was a very short read. So when anything which is short, it's like, even if it's not like uh, vibrant, you're kind of, and you're a reader, so you go through it. And I did, I was like, okay, maybe this has potential. This has potential to answer my questions. And of course, then you go through life, you go through all the tragedies, which you know about. And uh, and then you kind of realize, maybe me, I should go back to that and dive deeper and uh, try and find the answers that, that I now need uh, in, a, in a deeper fashion or in a more um, urgent fashion. My immediate reaction to it was to kind of shut myself up and figure it out. I was like, I need to know why. There is a pattern. I need to recognize that pattern. I need to see, and obviously, you know, obviously a global pandemic is also a big add-on, you yeah. know? So uh, the fact that everyone is suffering in some form or the other, you know, like, so there has to be a pattern to it. So I kind of like started doing all my research work and everything. And um, I just saw the potential in numerology, which I didn't see in anything else. And I was like something, but I still knew that conventional neurology is not delving deeper into it. I knew that it's not getting me exactly what I want, but as I said, it had potential. I could uh, kind of look deeper into it, find patterns, and maybe come up with something which is going to be an applicable, workable system. But then again, after I did do, uh, did do all my research and interviewed and kind of put things together and so with research, what happens is that you just never know what you might run into as a story, as a case study. And uh, a lot of case studies later, I realized that but there's so much of pain and suffering and numbers, actually, the, the, logic, the logic and the, rash, the rational part of numbers could really appeal to people in extremely um, painful times where you lose hope. But there's only despair. Do you think that's because rational thinking is very black and white? It's it's either a yes or it's a no. So it's really, it's comfortable. You knew my mother. You know the kind of household I've been brought up in. I do not like Molly Cotling. I don't understand it. So, you know, I need the truth. You know, yeah. and sometimes, we, and I know that I, I could have had the reputation of being kind of rough around the edges and being extremely blunt. But that's the way I've been brought up. So, uh, you know, like it's in my genes maybe. And like, I don't, I don't believe in, you know, uh, being placated or placating, you know, I don't like pep talks, you know, so, and I think one gets annoyed when you are given a pep talk in, t- in times of great amount of pain, if you're yeah. given a pep talk, like, you know, it makes you even, it makes you angrier, 
believe it or not. So at that point, you need cold blooded, dry logic, you know, that this is it. And this is going to happen because numbers are proving it. Yeah. I think uh, every day is a revelation. And yeah. I think every day is going to bring about a change, which is going to take you somewhere new. And be prepared for it. Brace yourself for impact. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> okay? And enjoy it. Make the most of it. Because that impact, maybe in, in that moment, you may not realize that how... Um, how profound it is. You may just you may you may just like experience the impact and feel the pain. If somebody at that time had told me, I can see your numbers. These nine numbers are telling me not astrology because that has 10 other interpretations. That I can see your numbers, it will get better. It's a natural progression of things because guess what, Sadhavni? This happens every nine years. This is the same stage you had gone through in a different way nine years ago. See the pattern yourself. You don't need to be an astrologer like me and go through all the scientific methods and the convolutions and the complications of science. You, as a layperson, can see it for yourself.